In this episode of Thinking Machines, we're going to look at an external configuration provider using Steel Toe and some of the popular options within. Let's get started. So you're doing .NET microservices in the cloud, which is a fancy way of saying you've got a web API project that's going to run in a container. Well, here's a heads up. Production is not going to be one single container running one single instance of your app. You're using the cloud for its ability to run many containers at a moment's notice. That means your app settings JSON file isn't going to scale. And if you think that environment variables are going to be the answer, try running between two clouds or more than one data center. Things get complicated quickly. Yeah, I get it. Configuration isn't a very sexy architectural topic. But in the cloud, configuration isn't just a few values that help your app do its job. And it most certainly shouldn't be a failure point in the app's architecture. In fact, Configuration should move with your application as it gets promoted through its development, staging, and production environments. It should be highly available, spanning data centers or even continents. Configuration should be treated exactly like your application source. What I mean is you write code locally on a Git branch. You commit the changes, you merge the branch, push the commit. And with all that, some pipeline of tasks is triggered and magical work is done. When you separate configuration from the application to a central repository, you use the same model. The values live in a repo as a property, JSON, or YAML file. It can be branched for logical division, like for different environments. It has full history and blame, just like your source code does. It's totally software defined which means it can be recreated at a moment's notice. And here's the big benefit. When a value in that external configuration is changed and pushed, the trigger should let your, know, let your app know about it. Now, I don't think pipeline stops instances and modifies files. Instead, think of the notice as a simple HTTP endpoint. Where the endpoint is called, your app safely retrieves the new values from the configuration server and updates objects accordingly. No downtime, but all fresh new values. I think of configuration as the glue of my microservice. It's got a bunch of endpoints that probably communicate with other services to do really cool stuff. But the app should hold as little connection or credential values as possible. Really, any values to make any decisions should not live in the app. Instead, it should expect to be told how to connect to those services or decide those business rules via config values. This makes the app portable and resilient to change. So without the glue, the app is not capable of running on its own in any environment. It needs that configuration glue to connect to a local service during development and highly available service when in production. All right, that was a lot of talking. And to be honest, I'm kind of hoping that all this sounds ridiculously complicated and slightly hopeless. Because I've got an answer to all this cloud expectation. It brings the agility of .NET microservices and the power of centralized configuration together in a pretty simple way, the Steel Toe project, specifically the application configuration. But instead of professing all its amazing abilities, let's head over to the big screen and see how this is done. All right, so let's get started. Let's look at how we're going to set up the configuration provider. We're going to use Spring Cloud Config Server as the service that will bind our app and the configuration values. I'm not going to get in too deep into Config Server and all its features, but I do want to point out its basic design. Config Server is a service instance running somewhere that someone is managing. Most likely it's on a dedicated virtual machine or running as a container in Kubernetes. It's a long running process with very little research or disruption, but it is very uh, resilient to uh, change. It comes with a little bit of technical debt because somebody's got a mansion. 
but everything consuming its service is software defined and held elsewhere. So it's pretty resilient to upgrades, outages, and all that good stuff. You can run config server locally during development, or you can deploy it as a service to any platform. It's Java based, so you'll need a Linux OS with the spring runtime. For all the Windows developers, the Steel Toad team maintains a container image of Spring Cloud Config Server. So it's very simple to spin up an instance on your Windows desktop with Docker. In fact, for our demo, that's exactly what we're going to do. But before we start a Config Server instance, we need to store our configuration values somewhere. Config Server offers quite a few different options for value storage. We're going to stick with the most popular, and that is creating a Git-based repository to hold all the values. So over to GitHub to create a new repository. We'll name it My Config Values and initialize it. Now to keep things simple, we're going to make the repo public. Obviously, this isn't a very realistic for a lot of applications you know, in any enterprise. Config server's got your back, though, all the way. It offers all kinds of ways to access a lockdown repo, the least of which is putting the config server and the Git repo on a very private network that is not publicly accessible. It's a pretty straightforward way of ensuring authorized people can uh, access it and no one else. Getting into the repo, there are a few points of decision making. First, the folder structure. This is significant to the config server and will affect how things are found. Let's assume that we're going to use this repo for development, staging, and production environments, all one repo. So we'll create a folder to represent each of those uh, environments. Next decision is about the naming of the file that will live within each folder. This is also significant to the config server. It will use this naming convention to connect the correct application. Let's name the file web application one developmentyaml I know this has drummed up a lot of questions using that naming and all that, and stick with me for a minute. We're going to get back on why that name was chosen and, and so forth. Within the new file, let's create a few basic values, maybe a string and an integer. We just want something to retrieve to provide our setup, uh, to prove our setup is uh, working. All right, let's change focus over to the config server itself. We want to run a local instance of a config server on our desktop. This will mimic what production is going to look like for the app. As I mentioned before, there's going to, we're going to use the Steel Toes image of config server to run in Docker. They haven't done anything special, and the Docker file used to create the image is open and available for your review. No secrets there. It's just a common need that they felt warranted offering an image. That's it. In starting the instance, we'll tell config server the URI of our Git repository and the directory within the repository to search. Notice the container will run on port 8888. This is the default port for Spring Cloud Config Server. Okay, let's start the instance and watch the logs for any errors. Looking good. If the server did have a problem connecting to the Git repo or couldn't find the search path folder we provided, uh, you'd be notified here in these logs. Our config server instance looks to be running in, uh, running in good order. So let's switch to our app uh, in Visual Studio. Start with the new web API project in Visual Studio. First step is to bring in the Steel Toe config server package from NuGet, then open program CS and add config server as an additional .NET configuration provider. That's it. At this point, we've told the app, when you start up, you're looking at all the different configuration providers, include a config server, which is running at some default URL. This example is following the default localhost 8888 address that SteelToe will try to use. So we don't need to go into app settings and set anything. If our server was at some remote address, we could provide that URI in the app settings with the port and steel toe would override the default values. Before we get into reading config values, one last thing to do is to check the value of the ASP.NET underscore environment, environment variable. All right, let's go back to when I said the naming of the YAML file is significant. That's because with the help of steel toe, everything's going to get calculated behind the scenes. When SteelToe connects to the config server, 
it's going to bring the name of the project along with the value of that ASP.NET environment variable. I'm going to put them together and ask the config server to search for a file with that naming convention. Uh, that was a lot, I know. <clears throat> there, there are quite a few moving pieces and abstractions happening, but I promise it's for good reason. This approach gives you all kinds of flexibility. You can use all kinds of different combinations of app name, branch name, tag name, uh, environment name to achieve different levels of configuration. It, it's crazy. Today, we're leaving all the craziness out, hopefully, and keeping it simple. Have a look at the Steel Toe application configuration docs to see all the different settings. And also, if you're really daring, head over to the Spring Cloud config docs to see all the many ways that a uh, config server can uh, be configured and what it can do. All right, we have a config server hooked up. Now we need to do something with it. Since we're keeping it basic, let's retrieve a few values in the default controller and output them in a get request. Open the controller class, inject Microsoft configuration interface in the constructor, and in the get method, look for all the labels and return their values. All right. Moment of truth. Start up the app and see if it connects. Now for our project, the browser is going to automatically navigate to that test endpoint and shazam! There are our config values. Behind the scenes, Steel Toe contacted the config server, grabbed the mapped config values, brought it back to the app, added everything into the app's overall .NET configuration. Also, if you were using Steel Toe's health endpoint, you would have automatically added the config server as a health contributor. There's a lot going on there in the background. A great example of how Steel Toe uses .NET to take your app to the next level with very little overhead for you. From here, you could enable the Steel Toe logger to see more information about the app's connection to the config server. You could look at strategies like config serp or failing fast. You could have multiple config servers running in different centers data centers and let the app switch between them. All kinds of scenarios in production that you'll want a provision for. We got the basics down and now it's time for you to discover what's possible. And with that, we're going to head back and wrap up. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Microservices done the right way. If you're feeling like this is all too involved and having a hard time understanding why one would use central configuration, try it out and see for yourself. I kept this example all local and basic so you can recreate things on your desktop. From there, you can get into the more advanced stuff and move it on to some cloud platform. There's a link below this video where you can learn more about Steel Toe, app configuration, and find all the documentation your heart desires. Have fun. And with that, thank you for watching.